homomorphism okay homomorphism all languages are homomorphism homo let's see this is a list let's see whether homomorphism is there or not so it is too trivial all language are generally homo homomorphism homomorphism means you are replacing symbol by another set of symbol and what is inverse that is interesting inverse is you put your language rules in reverse order okay that is inverse uh, most of the languages are also uh, it's like a rule is say s uh, right hand side and a s b and uh, inverse of this rule is s right hand side b s a that is inverse so whenever i say a, a language rules are there if you just inverse this rules what is the inverse say any rule uh, say if if your uh, rule is s a s b that is a context free language deterministic context free that is the language of this uh, a to the power n b to the power n s uh, left hand side and right hand side a capital s b and uh, s goes to epsilon uh, that generates the a to the power n b to the power n now what is the reverse of this language reverse of this is production rules are reversed well, how the reversing can be done the s b s a that's all so all the rules are reversed from the from the left hand side to right hand side uh, most of the language all languages are closed and the reversal and what is reversal homomorphism same most of the language are closed inverse means so you whenever you uh, see a big term you cannot understand always uh, divide and conquer like your math sort so what is inverse inverse is a language rules where you make a inverse okay that is inverse and what is homomorphism so homomorphism mean means is you exchange the symbols for another set of symbols so when we inverse homomorphism it looks big but it's pretty simple but the problem area is uh, i have told you the problem area is comes dsfl and cfl and intersection set difference complementation this for you have to right now have to try to understand on if you sometimes could not understand try to memorize say for uh, closer properties all these properties here for regular language all are yes so it is no but all other are yes and the others are all yes but this property lot of question will come that is union say this is very unique uh, uh, this is a this dcfl uh, deterministic context free grammar deterministic context free language same uh, see union is not no so any deterministic context free union is not so that is probably you can understand say a to the power n b to the power n c to the power m a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n if you make union it might give rise a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n which is not deterministic context free which is context sensitive grammar so deterministic context free language are that closed under union that there may might be some questions will come from mcq so that you have to Uh, remember by heart intersection uh, deterministic context free intersection is not also closed okay that is not also closed but you see complement complement of deterministic context free is closed but here is no so we always say context free language is not closed under complement but it is not true for deterministic context free grammar deterministic context free grammar is closed under complement but context free not and context free you know it is a super set of deterministic context free and fortunately all our programming languages are deterministic context free language that is great deterministic our all are, are, are another good point about deterministic context free language is like a to the power n b to the power n balanced parentheses or expression grammar these are the very good example of deterministic context free grammar and the you can always find an unambiguous grammar also so deterministic context free language it definitely you can have find a pda those are two equivalent terms this is sometimes it is uh, difficult for you uh, like uh, we have extensively told you that is uh, regular grammar deterministic finite state machine non deterministic finite state machine regular expression regular set all five are equivalent that is great same for context free grammar so context free grammar we all i always try to make it into two half one is deterministic context free grammar which is very very essential for our 
programming and another is non deterministic context free language which are very interesting but not very essential are programming okay but non deterministic context free grammar is very very complex uh, is interesting palindrome grammar the best example of uh, non deterministic context free grammar is palindrome uh, and wwr grammar but not ww ww again context sensitive that is a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n ww looks uh, context free grammar but it's not wwr is a context free grammar this should be go to your head uh, uh, during our lectures and uh, all mind seeking question mainly comes on uh, regarding this what i am to trying to say the deterministic context free language there is always equivalent pda machine okay that's great so these things have been proved by again noam chomsky and another two scientists uh, and another great thing is uh, context free grammar also you have an equivalent uh, non deterministic pda that's great and uh, like your regular language but in context dear non deterministic context free language may have some ambiguity ambiguity again uh, undecidable problems you know what is undecidable problems is uh, undecide what is basically undecidable problem undecidable problem is you have a most powerful machine uh, still today at the ha hand of computer scientist is turing machine okay. it looks very simple uh, he has designed it at 1936 37 alan turing till now that is the most effective machine it looks pretty simple it is just a tape i read right head it go one step left one step right it cannot be stationary and this is the most powerful machine and uh, heart of the machine is deterministic finite state machine and the tape only single tape and that tape in the beginning of the tape we have some instructions so that instructions configures your finite state machine in such a way that when the data portion comes this this turing machine can read and write on the same portion okay read and write or may go to the extreme right because left it generally do not go because left is a coding part if you say a single tape the, from the left the coding comes coding of the configuration of that finite state machine and then the rest is data one thing can be done the data uh, it reads it may be read only mode it reads the data and write it at the right end portion because we have told this universal turing machine can go infinite to the left infinite to the right so we make it fixed its life to the left is blocked it doesn't uh, decrease the power of the basic turing machine if you block the left hand side but you open the right hand side so read first and then read the data and uh, write the output of the data there that is a turing machine and that can solve any problem that's great so if you have any problem then uh, how how to do it it you should have some algorithm if you do not have any algorithm if you have a algorithm you are great and then it can be solved by turing machine that means same machine. if you do not have any algorithm then uh, that is interesting problem you know turing halting problem is one then other problem like uh, context free grammar there lots of undecidable problems are there see if it is a uh, two grammar in there in context free grammar take the example, most general context free grammar non deterministic context free grammar whether the uh, whether the generate same language or not so this is the problem this is uh, undecidable problem so it looks simple there is a is a uh, we have a you know that uh, you have you can have 10 grammars can generate the same language okay and you do not guarantee that there is not 11th grammar and uh, so whether the two grammars generate same language or not uh, it is a undecidable problem that means uh, then how to solve it we solve it by by individual uh, which and like that uh, that is it. but that is not algorithm then uh, there is a uh, but uh, as a computer scientist uh, uh, whenever you re go to the algorithm class you should have a clear idea from this automata class you can uh, this idea you can export to your algorithm class 
that what is basic algorithm? The basic definition of an algorithm, you know that it is a step by step, there's, uh, there may be loop, but it must stop. Uh, but another example of algorithm is if you put it in a uh, Turing machine can solve it, then you have algorithm, reverse Turing. If there is any algorithm, it can be solved by Turing machine and it can be solved by Turing machine and if it is not, then it is not solvable. But how to do it? Then you have to go for approximation algorithm. Then we have to solve the problem by various kinds of approximation techniques. Like, uh, like our, in our daily course of life, uh, you do not know what will happen, say maybe earthquake and all these things, cataclysm, maybe like virus. So, we have to do the ad hoc decision. So, we have tried to uh, reach the problem by ad hoc decision. So, this is the interesting and another thing is algorithm, the one portion is the complexity. You know the easiest of the problem is from the getting the binary search or push pop instead, that is the best example, easiest, you O1 complexity, push and pop or getting a value from array is a O1, then the next best is O a log n, like if you have a, if you have a binary search tree already there, if you try to find it from any uh, number is there or not, you go to the middle of the tree. And if you say your number is greater, then it should be there on the right hand side. If you are in the middle of the tree, your number is less than middle of the tree, you go to the left hand of the tree, you go to the again middle of this, again uh, right hand again middle of this. So, you are always attacking the middle position of an uh, tree, binary search tree and then you can advantage of log in. That is great. Log n to the base 2. Uh, most of the case in uh, uh, algorithm, whenever you see log, that is log, not based, not to the base e, like as in physics, uh, in computer science, everything log you see, it is base 2 and not also log 10. So, you obviously. So, log n is the then, then come o n, that is, you have to inspect every element, then come n square insertion sort and uh, this thing then n log n just before between n and n square mass sort n cube matrix multiplication these are very easy problems because you know this is called polynomial problems the problem comes whenever it will go for hamiltonian circuit uh, what is hamiltonian circuit i think i have explained in different way the traveling salesman problem a salesman uh, travels to every city and start from a city, say Kolkata and traverse all over West Bengal cities and come back to Kolkata without traversing a city twice. So, you take a graph, I, I would say it is a Hamiltonian circuit, the, if a graph that it traverses every node of the graph, it starts from the a particular node and reaches the same node without any node, without any traversal a node twice or thrice or something. So, it should start from a node and come back to the that node traversing all the cities in the graph, all the nodes in the graph. So, it is a definitely closed graph and there may be several paths between cities, but you have to traverse it uh, and, and then the what is traveling system problem basically? It is the minimum distance. So, if you add a constraint is a minimum uh, distance, a, uh, it should be then it is the problem of uh, complexity factorial n complexity which is much tougher than 2 to the power n. We know the 2 to the power n is the tower of Hanoi problem. Uh, this is, these are the tough problems. We call these problems are the intractable problems. But there is a solvable problem and solvable by Turing machine itself. Uh, Turing machine solve this problem. Your PDA cannot solve. Your PDA uh, solve only some basic things. Okay. Uh, maybe in syntax analysis, but Turing machine can solve. We, we see the configuration of Turing machine, but uh, beyond this, it is called the border is um, unsolvable problems. Unsolvable problems. Uh, then the come decision problem, decidable or undecidable. Decidable problem means you can decision is yes or no, uh, but it is solvable by Turing machine. Uh, okay, any question you can uh, put it right now. Any question. So, uh, the interesting portion of uh, uh, you, you must know this is though it is a context free language, but you should know the properties of the one should know the properties of DCFL and CFL are different. 
like union it is union of two dcfl is not cfl is no okay so i uh, everybody is muted i found some noise is coming i just check uh, please anybody can tell me whether all are muted or not if any question all are muted please answer me anyone Mm, then the say decidable problem decidable problems are the problems if we can construct a turing machine which will halt in finite time span for each input and give reply answer no or yes so we know this is decidable problem and uh, whatever problems in your algorithm class you have you are getting all are decidable problems uh, um, easiest are the sorting and all then tougher problem will be i don't know uh, you have to so i i think your algorithm class right now Uh, uh, Hamiltonian circuit and uh, these problems are tougher problems. It's the factorial and complexity is much more. The Hamiltonian circuit and find a click. What is the click problem? I have told you click problem. Say we are in a class of seventy students. So we have seventy students. Uh, some people have Facebook account. Some people may not have. Say if we are uh, giving to a problem that finding a uh, closest person or finding good friends. not faculty say uh, you are 70 people may one may not be friend with all each other so if if is good if one is friend with all your 69 friends but i want to find the largest group who are connected with each other definitely it cannot be 70 because your 70 student may not all not have the facebook accounts uh, some people do not have and of if all the all have facebook accounts they do not have all the friends of you so if i want to see the Uh, a group size maximum group size who are friend to each other uh, this looks very simple but it is very complex problem uh, say if we take the if you have a set your note size is 70 then if we say take that all cac first year second year third year fourth year say then it will be 120 to 4 it will be 480 uh, more than 480 maybe 520 something if you take the extra students Say then if you have to say what is the click size? What is the click size means uh, maximum click size? I want to find a group of CSE students of all fourth year, no, four first year, second year, third year, fourth year, who are uh, friend to each other. Everybody is friend to each other. Then you will see it is very very tough problem. It will might take say one hour to complete because you have to go each individual. student and see the their facebook friends so this is a very tough problem and it is a factorial n problem this is a decidable problem but it is a very tough problem it is not polynomial problem uh, so you uh, always have to find if it's found a polynomial problem is is great but it is not a polynomial problem then uh, uh, even the factorial n problem is a tough then we know how to approximate then the separate techniques are there in algorithm class you might know simulate and simulate and analyzing then the randomization then the various techniques you can try to solve it uh, this problem dynamic programming one dynamic programming uh, some of you have presented a cyk algorithm and mentioned about cyk parsing of the context free language of any context free language particularly non deterministic context free grammar because deterministic context free grammar you can always find an unambiguous grammar and it can be Uh, it can be o n that is great because all our programming language but whenever you traverse from deterministic context free to non deterministic context free grammar mm, your mm, parsing uh, maximum it could be n cube okay o n cube and there's a great parsing algorithm is there cyk algorithm uh, that takes a dynamic programming approach what is dynamic programming dynamic programming again a divide and conquer the mars sort is divide and conquer you know but you uh, in mars sort you you distinctly divide you distinctly divide and then you merge okay uh, but uh, dynamic programming you you make a s small group not distinct and then you you summarize the information and you use the information to bigger group so it is a uh, it is not strict divide into parts you are taking uh, if you have a big problem you take a small area you take some approximation make area bigger then make area bigger so you can cover this is a very useful problem for say factorial n calculation uh, so every time uh, you are using the factorial n calculation say you are giving the factorial calculation maybe 100 factorial 100 it is you try it in c language c 
crash java will crash maybe in python you can get answer the python is slow but python can handle a large integer very large integer mm. so it can come with a factorial 100 calculation the if but if you use a dynamic programming the factorial 100 uh, whenever you giving the factorial 100 it doesn't go to the generate the factorial 1 factorial 2 it will always generate and save it a a, a, cont a content and then whenever you give then you use that content it doesn't go to the scratch so it is an example of dynamic programming uh, so dynamic programming means you are solving part and then try to approximate the solution a bigger it's a divide and conquer but uh, not like Mars sort Mars sort is distinctly divide and then merger it is not distinctly divide it will take a small chunk and then make the approximation bigger so this is dynamic problem dynamic programming problem so uh, decidable problems means it can be polynomial tractables and intractable problems also uh, intractable problems there are techniques are there that is called dynamic programming is there then randomization is there you start from various places probably you have in the in tree uh, search and you know the various uh, randomized uh, search techniques uh, so okay so that's it uh, so decidable problem is this and there's some of the decidable problems equivalence of two regular languages finiteness of regular languages emptiness of context free languages these are the decidable problems regular languages uh, regarding regular languages everything is decidable and o o o parsing can be no way in but the problem is the regular languages you cannot do programming with it because whenever you need program you need uh, opening parenthesis close parenthesis that is a fundamental requirement of any function call any function call means you need opening brace and in python you may not see it but there are the in hidden parenthesis are there in 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 in, in, in space like indentation indentation is there mm, parenthesis invisible parenthesis uh, but whenever you see c uh, java you see the parenthesis the parenthesis uh, you have to match the opening parenthesis with the ending parenthesis. They should be equal number of these and they should match each other. Mm, this thing can only be done by a push down automata and this can only be done by deterministic context free grammar. And deterministic push down automata, deterministic context free language are equivalence. So, for, for context free languages, the, now the problem comes not all these things are decidable. Here it is decidable next see the next undecidable problem yeah undecidable pro a problem is undecidable problem if there is no turing machine exists which will always halt in finite time that i have told it undecidable will not have any algorithm what are the un un ambig uh, undecidable problem one problem i have told this turing halting problem is the best example another is the ambiguity of context free language i have told you the when the ambiguity comes, most ambiguity comes only in the non-deterministic context free grammar, mostly. So, deterministic content doesn't have ambiguity. So, uh, ambiguity detections, uh, it is a undecidable problem. Equivalence of two context free languages, this is I have told you. Uh, language uh, grammar is given, uh, they are generating the same strings, but you cannot say uh, by algorithmic technique that they are equivalent. Then we have to only generate the strings if the strings matching then say okay it probably same but you are you cannot sure because sometimes say at some point it will fail uh, completeness of everything these are the things uh, you take it as an example for your presentation and all these things this is also undecidable let's see so this is a this is another thing decidability chart this is very interesting that uh, for regular grammar everything is decidable which means you can solve it by turing machine but here in deterministic context free grammar you say subset that is uh, these are undecidable the deterministic this is overall context free that is non deterministic cover also then the undecidability more reaches and whenever you see context sensitive grammar uh, say here most of the things are undecidable with no algorithm when are, uh, this is what is this recursively recursive language or Turing decidable language so this is the uh, this is context sensitive grammar this is this is type 3 this is type 2 this is also type 2 and this is context sensitive type 1 and uh, then comes the type 0 the nearest of the type 0 is the recursive language or 
another name is turing decidable language what is turing decidable that means uh, in uh, that is the complement of uh, there is difference reverse and uh, co complement complement means sigma minus that language that is also mm, turing decidable so this is a turing decidable it is a recursive or turing decidable language and the complement of that language also uh, is turing decidable but it is it is recursively enumerable this is turing recognizable you you say that particular language turing recognized but complement of this uh, of the what is complement sigma sigma star minus that Sig complement means sigma star minus that uh, this is different from reverse uh, this is different from inverse so this is uh, complement means you all the language is sigma star and the complement is sigma star minus that language that may be uh, that may or may not be turing acceptable so that language is much bigger complexity that is called the uh, recursively enumerable or turing recognizable as per michael sipser uh, and everything is undecidable okay this is a tough area but uh, most of our uh, natural language processing or our all our this modern days devices which can talk with you like amazon product uh, our microsoft cortana or uh, google Al um, hello or so these are all programs uh, take care of this so they try to do it by approach okay let's quick so decidable problem a problem p is decidable if it can be solved by a turing machine t that will always halt halt means good uh, halt means uh, it comes to end it's a whether accept or reject we say p effective algorithm no, uh, note that the corresponding language of decidable is recursive recursive is uh, i have told you that is uh, turing decidable recursive and turing decidable are same and recursively enumerable and uh, turing uh, recognizable it is interesting area this is a uh, here one thing I, that is i have already given the example uh, a decidability and undecidability a formal language is a set of strings and here it says here uh, see the formal language consists of all strings describing hamiltonian graphs what is hamiltonian graphs i have told you what is hamiltonian graphs hamiltonian graphs is uh, uh, a, a, you have a graph is a closed graph closely connected maybe nodes are connected with each other or may not be uh, so you but all are connected so Hamiltonian graph means you start from a node and come back to the this node traversing all the nodes we call it Hamiltonian circuit and th whether the Hamiltonian circuit exists or not this is a uh, this is a tough problem but this is a decidable problem you have a graph it looks simple but you may not have hamiltonian circuit you know the simple example uh, like boxes and some always they, you cannot have a hamiltonian circuit not all graphs have hamiltonian circuit so you cannot uh, start from a graph without traversing a pain on it uh, you if you have to traverse all the points uh, you have to traverse a particular point twice uh, that is a famous uh, i think you all know that is a, a rectangular cross crisscross and there is a half a circle around this uh, this is a there is no hamiltonian circuit in it but they are all connected whether a particular graph has hamiltonian circuit as there are not it is a tough problem it is a uh, it is a uh, it is a it is not it is an intractable problem but there is algorithm that is decidable problem whenever you say algorithm it is decidable problems so if the language can be uh, decided by Turing machine, yes, in sensor, so it is a decidable. Let's almost. So, decidability versus undecidability, two types of Turing machine based on under those not recursive, too. It is all this is very interesting. So, these are the things you have to be clear the uh, Turing machine, uh, the following is undecidable. Though Turing machine, the whether the language accepted by Turing machine is empty or not, this is also undecidable it looks trivial whether the language accepted to the machine is finite whether the language accepted to the machine is a regular language see when it comes to Turing machine everything undecidable Wh every, every other language accepted by a deterministic finite state machine it is a always a regular language a decidable but when it, whether the language accepted by a Turing machine is regular language or not undecidable problems whether the language accepted by Turing machine context will or undecidable problems so it is very difficult to prove but you have to believe it in and uh, try to find the proof okay just uh, 
this is the decision properties so any language so emptiness whether the language empty finiteness membership equality for regular languages uh, all are good but this problem will come for the context free grammar context sensitive grammar and the type 0 recursive grammar the turing decidable uh, most of these things will be answer will be no see this is decision properties means whenever you are given the language of the grammar you have to say whether it is empty whether the language your grammar is there whether uh, whether in a, in a string will be generated or not that it will be uh, language may be shy language may be no, nothing your rules are there for regular language you can prove it for context we also can do, do this for may not be for the context sensitive but these are for theoretical computer science uh, maybe some tricky MCQs will come so here see the type 3 all are closed and here the context free type 2 here they don't have any distinction so it is a both see here intersection is cross complement is cross that is unique so but context sensitive say intersection is closed so two context sensitive grammar intersection is also a context sensitive grammar so this is very interesting area because most of programming languages are in this area thank you